Huh, would you look at that? iOS 13.2 is out. I wonder if there are any new HomeKit updates. Can't imagine that after 13.1 that they would have changed anything that big in 13.2. Huh, let's go ahead and check it out anyway. Okay, so... Doesn't seem like anything has changed. Huh, oh well, I wonder what my EVE room battery status is. Let's have a look. What? Wait, what is that? Separate tiles? Oh really? Apple actually listened to us? I wonder if there's anything else new in iOS 13.2. Greetings Internet, it's Dustin again with my HomeKit Home, bringing you all things Apple HomeKit from product reviews to how-tos to news, just like this one. So if that's something that you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our new content as soon as it's released. Well, it seems like only a week ago I was bringing you guys all of the new HomeKit features for iOS 13.1, and then Apple drops iOS 13.2. Believe it or not, 13.2 is actually stronger in terms of HomeKit, we get to see a lot of new features, not just grouping and ungrouping like we saw at the top of the video. So what we'll do in this video is we'll go through some of the major updates, at least the ones I've found so far anyway, and then at the end I'll give you my final thoughts on the update in general. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. With the release of iOS 13.0, there was a bit of a shock in the HomeKit world because Apple thought it was a good idea to actually combine the different sensors and the different services of an accessory into one single tile. This made it a little bit complicated to see all of the different sensor data if you had a power strip or an outlet that had more than one outlet that you could control well those were grouped together and so it kind of made it a bit of a mess but they've decided to go ahead and fix that in iOS 13.2 with the ability to actually control whether or not those services are combined. Smooth move Apple! For me, the standout feature of iOS 13.2 is the ability to include AirPlay 2 devices in our scenes and automations. This is something I feel that should have been there from the beginning of AirPlay 2, but I'm happy to see it now. So not only do we have the ability to actually stream audio right from Apple Music, if we have iTunes Match, we can also use any sounds that we have in iTunes Match. For example, we could leave messages for loved ones, etc., etc. The possibilities are really endless here. But as you can see, we can choose from our library. We can choose from For You, from Browse section, from the radio section even, or we can choose a specific song. So, you know. Like I said, the options here are really endless and I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys a ton of videos on how to actually use all of your AirPlay 2 speakers in HomeKit and I think it's going to be a fabulous tool. Next up is HomeKit Secure Video. Now, back at WWDC earlier this year, Craig Federighi touted the ultra secure, ultra private way that HomeKit Secure Video actually processes our footage locally using a home hub, so a HomePod, an Apple TV, or an iPad, before sending it to the cloud where it is then used in HomeKit. A lot of people are really excited about this feature, myself included, and I can't wait to get my hands on these actual features. But there is one caveat to this whole thing. Now they did mention it at the keynote, but they kind of glossed over the fact that HomeKit Secure Video is a paid service. So yes, we do get 10 days of stored recordings that don't count against our iCloud storage plan, but we will need one of the upper tiers of the iCloud storage plan in order to use the service. So we get one camera for the lower tier at 200 gigabytes or we can have up to five cameras on the upper tier with two terabytes. I'm not sure I like how this is going. Thank you. 
And finally, iOS 13.2 brings us support for HomeKit routers. Now, we don't have a ton of information on how this will actually work, but the idea seems to be to be able to, per device on our network, quarantine and determine what are the security features of it. And this is confirmed in some screenshots that we obtained from at Chaos T on Twitter that that's how we can actually work with the devices. As per device, we can determine how it's treated on our network, which is a pretty interesting idea. Now, Linksys, Eero, and Charter Spectrum have all announced that they will be supporting HomeKit routers in the future, so we'll stay tuned for that. And would it be so difficult for Apple to throw us a bone and give us support for airport devices? A man can dream. So it might not seem like iOS 13.2 was a huge change for HomeKit, but in fact we saw some under the hood improvements that are actually going to pave the way for future improvements. And by that I'm talking about HomeKit Secure Video and HomeKit Router Support. In terms of HomeKit Secure Video, no manufacturers yet are supporting it, but hopefully we'll see Logitech release a firmware update here pretty soon, so all of our Logitech Circle 2 cameras will be on HomeKit Secure Video. We'll see how that pans out. But Natatmo and Yuffie have both publicly stated that they will be supporting HomeKit Secure Video, so hopefully we see that soon. In terms of HomeKit router support, although I would love to see the Airport Extreme and Time Capsules brought up to the standards with HomeKit router support, I am not holding my breath, to be honest. Um, it would be nice. We did see the update to AirPlay 2 with the Airport Express but I just don't see it happening with the Airport Extreme and Time Capsules. Now, in terms of the more forward features for iOS 13.2, we have some significant changes, and the biggest change for me is AirPlay 2 in scenes and automations. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to add music and sounds to the different scenes and automations that I have in my home, and I'm really excited, and we'll be bringing you some more videos on how you can actually incorporate that in your HomeKit setup, so stay tuned for that. Of course, I'm happy to see the grouping and ungrouping of accessories. We definitely like the option. One thing I would have loved to have seen, however, is the combining of different services from different accessories. For example, I have various rooms in my house that have multiple temperature sensors because I have different types of sensors that all have temperature sensors. And I would love to put all of those temperatures into one single tile so that I could see different levels, you know, where if I have a, for example, Example, the Fubaro leak sensor that one sits on the floor so we can know the temperature down there we can know the temperature kind of more at kind of a waist level and then more at an eye level as well to see kind of the variations of temperature in our home but I suppose that'll have to wait until a later update so what was your favorite update to the home app in iOS 13.2 let us know in the comments down below also below the video in the description box, you'll find links to everything we talked about in today's video as well as the blog over at myhomekithome.com. And you can also find links to our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at myhomekithome for more HomeKit related content. As always, if you found this video useful, let us know by giving us a great big thumbs up. And if you're interested in more HomeKit related content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any any of our new content as soon as it's released. Well, that about wraps it up for this one. I do thank you for watching, and until I see you in the next one, this has been Dustin with my home kit home.